Hi guys, welcome to Bow Hunting Soul episode. I think this is going to be number three. Uh, I'm not sure what the order I'm going to re uh, release some of these in, but today we're going to be talking about broadhead sharpening. Right now we're downstairs in, uh, in my basement, kind of my, my area where I do some of that. I kind of set up a little uh, uh, table with, with plywood over here. Uh, down here is kind of where my wife and my six-year-old daughter refer to as my hovel hole. It's, uh, I'll take it. It's not fancy enough to be a man cave. So uh, I've kind of set up this table here to show you guys what we're going to be working with. We've got a piece of cardboard. That'll come in handy later. We've got a file. This is just the mill bastard file. We've got a DMT, a kind of diamond flat uh, sh um, stone. It's not really a stone. And we've got one of these folding Lansky you know, ceramic rod deals, and, ju and just another one, like an extending one. Now, before we get into why or, or how we're going to uh, do this, we're going to talk about the why. Now, the why should be pretty obvious, right? Um, it, you know, sometimes it's gruesome to think about it or, uh, you know, uncomfortable, but we're, we're bow hunting and we're trying to send this through an animal to cut as many arteries and, and veins and cause as much hemorrhaging, bleeding as possible. This should be a scalpel. We're basically sending a scalpel projectile through an animal. Um, if this is dull, it doesn't cut cleanly. It moves arteries and veins and stuff like that aside because those things are elastic. This needs to be razor razor sharp and, in my opinion, it needs to be stropped, meaning there's no rough edge on it. Now, I know there's a lot of uh, people out there that that swear by just, just a, like a rough filed edge and they swear by the micro serrations that happen along the edge. Well, I'm not convinced of that. Those micro serrations are not strong. It feels like it's sharp, like it's going to tear stuff. But I think it's sharp for about the first like inch or two and after it goes through the hide and, and starting to go through the muscle, that wire edge just kind of rolls over and gets dull. Now, if you don't know what a wire edge is, I'm going to talk about it here just, just, just a little bit. But um, just going forward, we're actually going to put a file sharpened edge on here. I use a file. Uh, you can use these. You can use a, uh, you know, a stick like this. I carry one of these in my, in my hunting pack, actually, just to kind of touch up an edge if I need to. But I don't actually sharpen with these things. I just kind of have them out here to show you some of the examples. There's other sharpeners out there that have like a jig. They get like a right, you know, proper angle. Uh, you can use um, a belt sander, a belt, a cheap uh, belt sander, like like the work sharp uh, sander, or uh, you know you can get one from Harbor Freight or Northern Tool or whatever. I I just like to do it by hand. It's a two blade. Uh, this is uh, not necessarily going to transfer over to. Well, the principles are, but I, I don't really know how to sharpen a three blade. Actually, three blades are supposed to be easier. They just kind of sit. On, on the stone and you just you just kind of do it but I don't I don't shoot three blades so this isn't going to be about a three blade one anyway so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to put an edge on this thing and then we are going to um, take that burr off and, and then polish it it needs to be sharp enough you know to shave hair it needs to be sharp enough to cut an elastic band do the elastic band test so we're going to get right into that what we're going to do now this is again a Zwicky Eskimo and depending on the heat treat and the hardening, it can be actually hard to kind of get started. Okay, but we're basically going to use, you know, we're, we're going to, I'm going to freehand this, but you see this ferrule right here, right? Here's, here's the ferrule part, or, you know, where the adapter goes in, here's the ferrule part. And you can tell, obviously, it's thicker back here than down here. Well, you can use this as a guide. Okay, I mean, you're obviously not going to sharpen that. You're going to have to do, you know, with one of these, right? Otherwise, you're going to hit this. But as you go down here, obviously, it gets thinner. So you don't want to start your file out like this and then, you know, do one of these, you know, at the back of the broadhead and at the front of the broadhead. You're going to have to keep that same angle. And if you can't, and if you can't keep it, just, just practice. I mean, you, you can always burn, you know, burn up a broadhead. These things are pretty cheap. There's a lot more expensive broadheads out there. But, I mean, Zwicky Eskimos, you get three of them for like 17 bucks, And <laughs> they're really, really good. And also, uh, another trick over here is if you uh, trying to keep track of, of, of how, you know, how you're doing over here, you can actually just paint the edge of this with a Sharpie, with a black Sharpie. And as you grind away or as you file away, um, 
then, then you're going to see the spots that you missed or if there's a low spot, high spot or whatever. So we're just going to kind of get into it. Now, before we get into it, I want to warn you, this is sharp. Always control the broadhead. They have jigs that actually like the, this thing lays into and you know you can control it if you're going to sit there and do it on, on, on your leg. Don't jab this into your leg. If you want to use a piece of cardboard or leather or something like that to protect, you know, in between, that's fine. I, I, I just have, you know, a lot more confidence, you know, kind of having this nice and tight and close and controlling it. And uh, I'm not worried about, like, jabbing myself. But you know, it's just kind of tucked in here like a chicken wing. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start and we're going to, you know, work from here out. Now. There's also opinions about, you know, you should always work from the center of the broadhead out toward the edge. And some people say you shouldn't work from the edge toward the center. It doesn't matter. It does not matter as long as the angle is the same. Because I'm, I'm right-handed. If I'm doing this, what am I going to do? Turn around and come back like this? That doesn't work. I do this, and then I will flip it and then start at the edge and come on in. The, if you're doing it right and you're not putting any nicks and gouges or anything like that, in, it's, it's going to end up the same. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually turn this um, camera down so you can actually see what I'm doing because I'm going to use the, the table as kind of a little bit of a support here. If you can see what I'm doing and we're going to do this. Now this will take a while and this is already sharp and I'm just kind of re redoing it but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you the, the, the technique here. And you can feel it when you start doing this. You can feel. I normally sit. I'm, I'm normally sitting on a chair doing this. This is kind of flimsy here, but um, you can feel the file start to bite. It'll, it'll first. It'll seem like it's kind of skipping off, and it's just a little too smooth. Okay, but then you know you keep at it, and you're gonna feel. You can actually see that, you know, you can't maybe not on camera, you can actually see the shavings start going in there. And what you're going to do is you're going to actually raise on the back side of this a wire edge. You can actually feel it. Sometimes uh, you can't really see it on, on this camera, but sometimes, you know, if you, not sometimes, if you do it good enough, you can actually see the fuzzy edge along, along the edge over here. That's the burr. And it's kind of like a snow plow. You know, it, it the file kind of takes material and it tips it over the other side. And then you basically come back from the other side and you file this side and it tips that burr back to the other side. And you, and you just basically, you're just moving it back and forth and back and forth. But we got to get that out of there because that burr is not good. So we got to keep, keep on filing here. Okay. And I'm starting to, I can feel it. I can feel I'm going to start to raise an edge. Now, if you're going to come at it from the blade, the, the edge side, start gently because you can, you can feel yourself knocking that, that, that wire edge off. If you're coming up from here upstream, you're going to knock the edge, you're going to knock that wire burr off. If you're coming from the center going toward the edge, that burr is going to want to fold over to the other side because you're actually, it's got nowhere to go. But if you, but if you start from here, you're going to start to knock it off. So what we're going to do is back and forth, back and forth, back and forth like this until it keep, keep the angle the same. And then come at it again from this side. And what you're going to try and do, not try and do, you will do, is that until you have no longer an edge there. Now, some people... We'll use this, you know, uh, like, like a like a, um, a ceramic rod or, or a, you know rod type sharpener, and then just kind of lightly touch that up to get that burr out of there, um, you know. But it does the same thing; it's still moving metal, and you can you can feel if you just gently enough, you can feel it moving metal when you're doing that. Now I have good enough luck because I've been doing this a while to actually be able to do the burr, and then come back this way and then start knocking the burr off. And then you just do it lighter and lighter until you get to the point where you just basically, just like the weight of the file is just just basically just grazing it. This, I mean, this may take you five minutes, this may take you 20 minutes. We're kind of going fast in this video to show you the steps. Um, 
this one I'm definitely going to have to go go over again and and resharpen really really well because I you know kind of mucked it up for this uh, uh, video, but it's no big deal. You need to have the skill to be able to do this. And like I said, you keep doing it back and forth, back and forth, moving that burr, and pretty soon that burr is going to fall off. But you can do it with the file. You just got to do it progressively, lighter and lighter strokes, and then. Um, then you're not raising a burr anymore, you're actually getting rid of that burr. And the final step is stropping. Now stropping, well that's an old timey like blade term, meaning um, moving the edge of the, you know, the, the cut, the edge of the blade, whatever it is, a knife, broadhead, what have you, back and forth, okay, dragging it backwards over leather. Now stropping can take many forms, these days, we still have leather straps. Some people uh, will kind of do it on, on their blue jeans. Okay, I've done that too. But the best thing that I found, and I'm sure you can have find this lying around, is a piece of cardboard. Just a piece of cardboard. Now you do need to have the burr off of this, or, or almost completely off of this, until you can no longer get it. Um, you know, uh, build a burr back and forth with the file. You only, you can only do so much. Now, some people take this to a uh, like a polishing wheel with some uh, uh, like jeweler's rouge on there, like a polishing compound. It'll put a you know super fine scalpel edge on there. But if this is all you got, you basically take the you you, you take your, your your corrugated cardboard and you do this, and you can actually feel on one side versus another where that, that burr is, is, is or the wire edge of that burr is digging into. And the corrugations really help with kind of, um, well, it, 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 just, it just grabs onto it better. And you just do this back and forth. Okay? Do that back and forth. Start feeling the edge. Don't cut yourself. Um, and then you can, you know, take it further from here. You can, like I said, you can do it on jeans uh, at your own risk. And, you know, pretty soon, if you look at this thing, again, you really can't tell on here. And I got I to gotta do this a little bit more. But you get to a point where there is no kind of fuzzy edge that you can see when, you know, when you hold it up to the light. I mean, you can actually see it when you start doing this. So the best thing to do is just actually practice. Have, have a practice broadhead. Hopefully you have a broadhead that you uh, <coughs> dedicated just for practicing, shooting into... Uh, targets or into dirt or whatever because you should be practicing with your tar uh, with your broadheads take that one and resharpen it over and over and over again and then shoot it in the dirt again and get it get the edge bad and then resharpen. the only way you're gonna learn is to is, is to do this now um, I don't know if this is gonna shave hair because like I said this was this was razor sharp when I pulled it out but we kind of you know went quickly through the video here um, but a good gauge okay don't stab yourself is you know the ability to the ability to shave. I don't know if you saw that. Um, you can always tell traditional. There you go. You can always tell a traditional bow hunter or somebody that you know is all about this kind of stuff. Um, they'll have like big patches of of hair missing on their arm. Don't stab yourself with this. Uh, you can also do the elastic band test where you just take the elastic band and just kind of stretch it in your in your hands. Not super stretch, but just tight enough to you know that it's stretched, and then just okay and it should cut cleanly it shouldn't bend you know and that's supposedly uh, the same consistency as arteries and things like that remember we're trying to send a scalpel through this thing um, it may not be pleasant to think about but remember we're out there to cleanly harvest these animals and that means hemorrhaging that means, means basically making them bleed and the faster you can make them bleed the more you can make it the more vessels you cut the quicker that animal dies so I mean that's 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 just the fact so Anyway, um, this was just kind of a quick overview, but basically, like I said, you can do it with just like a like a five dollar, eight dollar file. Okay, this one doesn't even have a handle on it. I actually like it that way; it fits in my hand better. And you just sitting in front of the TV doing whatever, pay attention to it so you don't cut yourself. And while you're watching Game of Thrones or whatever, don't get you know uh, so involved that you end up bleeding. But you know, do this, do this, flip it over couple of these test it and then put it in your quiver by the way get put in check these periodically throughout um, hunting season because putting it in and out of your quiver will actually dull the edge a little bit you know so you should always keep these things touched up 
you owe it to the animals to have the absolute scary, scary, scary sharp broadhead that you can because, well, that's that's just our responsibility to, to clean to, to clean the kill these things because you don't want this thing wounded or, or running around or not penetrating or, or whatnot. So um, when they go in and out of your quiver, they will get a little dull, touch them up. If you're going to hold on to them for a while, um, a good trick is to actually just coat them in Vaseline so they don't rust, especially some of these, you know, just regular um, steel ones that aren't like stainless steel. Some people say uh, uh, they don't want to do the thing in Vaseline because they have this crazy notion that if it, when it goes through the animal that it prevents uh, bleeding, the, the Vaseline will help clot the hole. Come on, seriously, this, use your head, people. Do a little bit of critical thinking here. There's, there's no way. It's just, it's just a thin, thin coating, and it's not going to prevent uh, or, or cause clotting or prevent blood from coming out or anything like that. So, But it is going to preserve your broadhead. So anyway, thanks for tuning in. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. And I'll probably put a, uh, <coughs> a link to to some of these uh, products. There's, there's, there's Lansky here, there's a Smith Sharpener, um, and I'm gonna put, uh, I, I'm an affiliate with Amazon, so if you do, you know, wanna see some of these things and actually buy them, I'd appreciate it if you click through mine, I get a little bit of uh, a kickback in return, just enough to kinda pay for the cheap tripod I'm using, but um, I did wanna disclose that, and uh, yeah, you can find all the stuff and many, many others online, so. Appreciate you tuning in. Subscribe, like, and share, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.